Hello to the fellows and also, well, I got you here, the ladies. I'm doing uh, the lead acting predictions for the Oscars right before the festivals begin. Venice is starting, like, fuck, really soon. I gotta get two more of these out before I gotta start, like, really hammering home uh, tiff shit. So enough of the time waste, enough of that baby shit. Let's get on with the fucking stuff. Start out with best actor. I still think that Daniel Craig has got to win. I think he makes every bit of sense in the world in my head, but Coleman Domingo makes a lot of sense as well. Yeah, I do have um, Sing Sing winning Best Picture. I don't take it lightly that I have um, Sing Sing winning, but not him. And rewatching Sing Sing, I definitely, he, he has all the stuff, and I really should be taking it more seriously. I just really think that, well, I mean, I'm taking it very, very seriously, but... I still, like, the reason I still think Daniel Craig is going to win is just because, like, I think queer uh, is going to make quite uh, some noise at the festivals. It's now going to three major festivals. Like, that's huge. Going to everything except Telluride, really. And again, he just, ha he seems like he has all the stuff, whereas Sing Sing is a little bit more of an ensemble piece. But doesn't really blend well for lead acting wins. I think if you want to look at a win, you should look more at Clarence Macklin. Although, again, uh, no, no, I'm not denying Coleman Domingo. I just really think Daniel Craig is the guy. Biggest update in this category, of course, is uh, Timothy Chalamet. Playing Bob Dylan, I think this is just going to happen, uh, whether or not a complete unknown gets into Best Picture. He's in. Um, that said, I feel like, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind... He's not winning. I think, like, if you want to entertain the idea, you can. Like, of course, it makes sense. But, like, I don't know. Is Bob Dylan really, like, that character? Like, is he... I don't know if Timothy Chalamet is going to, quote-unquote, transform. I don't think he's going to be that, like, deep of a character dive like, in a way that Coma Domingo was and Daniel Craig might be. Like, he'll get in. Like, he's playing Bob Dylan and he's also, like, Timothy Chalamet. He's like the guy right now. I just, I just really think if you're considering a win, I think you should stop. But like this, if playing Elvis couldn't get you a win, what, what is playing Bob Dylan gonna get you? Or Leonard Bernstein, because like Elvis came close, but like Leonard Bernstein playing, you know, Bradley didn't even come close to winning. After that, I, I, I think Adrian Brody. You gotta predict him, I feel like, if you're predicting Brutalist. And honestly, even if you're not, I think you gotta consider him. Because Brutalist is gonna be, I feel like, another character study of Adrian Brody's character. And, like, he's gonna, like, I feel like he's gonna be like, his biggest role since he won for The Pianist. I think it's time for him to get nominated again. I think if Brutalist is in, he's in. Plain and simple. I think he's gonna be pretty big, a pretty baity even. Do I think he's gonna win? Probably not. But, uh, you know, he'll get in, I feel. I feel like if Brutalist, yeah. Yeah, I'm predicting Brutalist for picture. I gotta predict him. The last slot, I'm sticking with Sebastian Stan for The Apprentice. Playing Donald Trump. I don't really think I need to argue, like, that much. Like, you guys know why I'm predicting him. But, you know, it's just kind of simple as this. If the movie's coming out, how does he not get in? I mean, I guess if Queer, Sing Sing, Clean Known, Brutalist, Conclave, all those get into picture, that's how he doesn't get in. But, like, this is such a big role for him, and I feel like... You know, it makes so much sense playing Donald Trump being in the year that we're in. Apparently, he's just fantastic in the role, and I think it just could become come easy to him as long as it comes out. To me, as long as it comes out, he, it'll be seen for him. I think Jeremy Strong could suffer for the um, the you know the lack of a grab that the Apprentice will have. But I don't know. I think Sebastian Stan is just gonna happen if the movie gets is like comes out this year which is by no means a guarantee but i don't know so joaquin phoenix on the outs for uh joker folly uh, this definitely has to do with the fact that he uh recently got cold feet on the todd haynes movie that he brought to him and just dropped out of the movie five days before production was set to begin which is so fucked up uh, a lot of people are f like got fucked out of money and like work so first things first Fuck you, Joaquin Phoenix. And second, I don't... I think it's plain and simple. I really struggle. I mean, unless it blows over, which is, you know, it's Hollywood. It's possible. I don't really see how an industry is going to want to, like, go for him after, like, that. Plus, you know, it is a case of we just did this and Lady Gaga's right there. I, uh... I, I am struggling to see how they're going to go with Joaquin after this. I don't know. If the movie's quite good and he's just another monster and, they, and people will just stop caring, then, 
you know, I suppose the world exists, but for now, I'm going to say no. I, I struggle to see it. Ray Fiennes, I think, will definitely happen if Conclave is in picture. I have no reason to believe otherwise. I think he, like Agent Brody, it's been a long time since he's been nominated for an Oscar. I think everyone will be down for it. Conclave will probably be, if, if it's in picture, it's going to be pretty big. I, well, it's going to be big enough for Ray Fiennes to just slide right in. That said, if Conclave's not in picture, get, get rid of him. He's just over. Conclave will get goose-egged if it's not in picture. Yeah, that plain and simple. I don't really see how uh, Conclave, because if Conclave is not in picture, there's a reason why. Maybe it's not good, not or not great even. I don't think he can get, can, can get away with being okay. And it looks like it's just like, it could just be some basic ass thriller. You know what I mean? Like it, a lot of reasons why Conclave could miss, although there's a lot of reasons he could get in. I really do think Ray Fiennes is on only if it's in picture kind of thing. But yes, I do think if it's in picture, it's not even a question. I've seen some people like float out a win for Ray Fiennes. And to that, I gotta say, maybe maybe dial it back i don't really see how this is a winning performance personally um i mean i'm open to it i suppose like but i don't know like he's playing a cardinal how fucking you know meh gave me labelle for saturday night that trailer really made me go ooh labelle and it's really been dawning on me the last couple days a saturday night might might just be nominated for best picture because i'll tell you why it's probably gonna win tiff it's already doing gangbusters with its tickets with for those that are able to get tickets right now it's gonna be one of the buzziest as long as it doesn't suck which it won't Saturday night it's probably gonna like at least rank at tiff and at that rate i think it might have to predict in a picture would i predict labelle in uh retaliation to that that'll have to wait and see judging by the trailer he's like not just doing some basic ass like he's not just being he's not transforming per se but he's also not just doing some basic biopic performance you know being lorne michaels isn't nothing obviously he's got a lot of respect in the industry and judging by the trailer labelle looks like he's gonna be like stressed out bro looks like he hasn't slept in a while he's got a little crazy eyes at the end of the the trailer it looks like he's doing a lot he really made me raise an eyebrow and i actually do think that like he will stand a shot at a, re a really good shot of the nomination if he's in picture also with joaquin dropping out like, well, okay, not, you know what I mean? With everything going on with Joaquin, I think it's pretty clear to me that LaBelle is, has the Golden Globe on lock. He is younger. He is younger. Like, I'm older than the dude. So, yeah, I'll wait and see for LaBelle. We'll see how it works out for him. But I, I have high hopes for him. John David Washington for the piano lesson. I mean, if the piano lesson is in picture, I feel like as long as competition isn't too strong, he would get in. Although he might be overshadowed by Dead Wilder and Jackson is the thing. That could be a problem. I don't know if... If the movie's not a picture, I feel like he just wouldn't come close. But I don't know. I feel like he'll be pretty big. After that, I'm not really taking anyone else that seriously. Paul Maskell for Gladiator, I guess I can mention. <laughs> that, I watched that trailer and went, no, to, to Paul. Whereas I went, oh, maybe I'm, I'm underestimating Denzel. Paul Maskell made me go, nah. It's going to be like an action-y performance. It, like, it looks like it's leaning more to action than the first Gladiator. And you can say, oh, well, Russell Crowe won for Gladiator 1, so why can't Paul Mescal win for this? Is Gladiator 2 winning Best Picture? Bet? I think even if I were to predict Gladiator 2 in picture, I would say no to Paul Mescal, like, pretty definitively. George Mackay for the end, I actually still think the end could show up as a big surprise to the festivals and become one of the most buzzed about and talked about. I don't necessarily think that means George Mackay would absolutely get in, but uh, I think it's he's worth mentioning, maybe for a Globe nom, and that he'll lose to LaBelle, but, you know. Paul Bettany and Andre Holland, I think, are in the same position where I feel like I would definitely take them a lot more seriously if I knew what the fuck was going on. My guess with the actor is it's just like Neon has their hands full and they're just waiting to premiere at Cannes next year that's my guess for now i'm i'm open to it coming out this year still collaboration just a fucking enigma it just doesn't seem to be doing anything it's like we, you have a and, and i know it's finished it's like well paul bettany as andy warhol how do you how are you gonna fumble that motherfucker apparently they are i don't know what's going on with it it's to me it seems strange that uh paul bettany or jeremy pope would get in for the collaboration if they're not premiering at any festival. Harris Dickens for Baby Girl. I haven't really talked about Baby Girl. My guess is that Baby Girl is just going to be like a fun erotic thriller. Going to Venice and Tiff is fun and all, but like, you know, I think it's just going to be like a good movie. I don't really think Harris Dickens would happen, but I'm willing to talk about Nicole Kidman when I get the actress. Sebastian Stan for a different man. It's the first time I've actually brought him up, like, like seriously. My guess is just absolutely not, but I guess if The Apprentice doesn't come out, uh, there could be like, oh, well, if we want to like talk about Sebastian, there we are for a different man where apparently he's fantastic. But my guess is just a different man. It's just not going to go anywhere. Glenn Powell, Hitman. Eh, probably not. Andrew Garfield, We Live in Time. I'm only bringing it up because like, like if the movie isn't terrible, 
I think him and Florence would maybe stand a chance. Darrell Jerome for Unstoppable. I am going to see that Tiff. We'll see. Uh, maybe he's really great. Maybe he's fantastic and he's he'll make some noise. But uh, my guess is he'll be more like along the lines of something like Kelvin Harrison Jr. for Chevalier where it just never manifests. Tom Hanks for here. <laughs> Hilarious. And then I have Orlando Bloom for the cut and then Paul Walter Howes for Luckiest Man in America. Just like as like those Tiff lead performances that I'm like, we'll see. Probably not, but we'll see. Best Actress. New number one, I think that Carla Sofia Gascon might actually win Best Actress for Amelia Perez. Let's think about this. Don't, don't yell yet. Let's think about this. Angelina Jolie is not going to win. Mikey Madison is only going to win if Honora wins picture. I think with Mikey Madison, she's like way, like she's like, yeah, it's Carla's uh, breakthrough as well. But Mikey, she's going to get in. Mikey's going to get in. But I feel like it's, there is going to be a little bit of that young bias where like she'll have no problem getting the nomination, but like a win might be pushing it. And then Angelina Jolie, I don't think if it's, if, is this the only nomination for uh, Jolie? I mean, maybe it's not for uh, Maria. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not, but like, does that really get you a win? And I really, I'm not buying this Amy Adams winning thing. Quite frankly, like I, I buy the possibility. Like I, okay, let me rephrase that. There's definitely a theoretical argument for Amy Adams winning, but I don't actually see it like manifesting into something real. Enter Carla Sofia Gascon, and bef like let, let's really think about this. This woman is gonna get all four nominations. She's gonna get the Globe, where she'll probably win. Honestly, they could go all out on Anora and give it to Mikey at the Globes. I'll definitely say that's possible, but she's gonna get nominated Globe. The Critics' Choice are going to go for her, too. And honestly, SAG might go all out for Amelia Perez, which will definitely include Carla. And then the BAFTA. What? Ooh, what? Everyone else is going to go for international performance except for the BAFTA. Does that sound right to you guys? She's going to get all four major precursors in the Oscar nomination. I think the nomination is just secure as can be. It's just not no real reason to, to argue it at this rate. But, like, let's think about this. I already said she's going to win the Globe. But, who well, no, knows? she's going to win plenty of Critic Awards. In fact, she might honestly lead. The critic awards i don't think mikey's gonna lead okay maybe she could act. Oh, mm. okay mikey mikey or angelina could lead but I, I i swear to god it's gonna be carla who leads the uh critic awards and then from there which automatically gives her a possibility to win the critics choice and she could easily win sag again i think sag is really gonna eat up amelia perez and you know she obviously has a little bit of a narrative on her side and you think that all that's all an international performance is gonna win all of that and not bafta what I'm saying is Carlos Sofia Gascon could easily sweep or maybe win everything but Critics' Choice. Like, that's all on the table for Carlos Sofia Gascon. And I think a win, like, like just, like, it makes so much sense. It's been playing around with me for a while. Emilia Perez is going to have a pretty big presence at the festival. It's probably going to rank at TIFF, maybe even win TIFF. I think get Carlos Sofia Gascon, it should be taken, like, I feel like everyone's taking Carlos Sofia Gascon seriously, which makes me happy. But I think not seriously enough. Mikey Madison's nomination is secure. I mean, she's the only person I can call a lock right now, just judging of what's been seen. And Julianne Jolie, as long as Maria comes out, she's getting in. Julianne Moore for The Room Next Door, uh, it does seem pretty clear to me that she's lead now. I mean, obviously that could change when the, it gets seen, but again, Room Next Door is going to have a pretty big, strong presence, and Almodovar, for nothing else, gets his actors nominated, so... Yeah. Julianne Moore. Then we got Lady Gaga for Joker. The Joaquin Fallout, I think Lady Gaga will get a lot more positive publicity. I think Lady Gaga will stand out a lot more, like, playing. I'm not saying she'll be better, but I think she'll be a little bit of a scene stealer. So I do think Lady Gaga's nomination does seem right, but I feel like a win is not happening. Again, I really think that there are some people who are struggling to take uh, Gaga seriously as an actress. And on top of that, if the movie's not a picture... Yep. Bye bye. But you know, if if it's in picture, I feel like I feel like she'll just happen. I'm ready to put Amy Adams in for Night Bitch, but I wanna I wanna see it first. I will be at I'm gonna try and be at that premiere at TIFF so I can get it firsthand. Tilda Swinton for the end. Um, now that's who I think will get in if the end is in picture. I feel like just judging by that one uh, still we have, she looks very vacant and like like nothing behind her eyes. I feel like she'll be a little quirky, a little weird. Maybe even not technically like maybe like the lead in the way that like. Michelle Williams was lead, but yeah, I, but you know, without end, I well, maybe even without the end, I could I see Tilda getting in. Marianne Jean Baptiste, um, I think that Hard Truth is in a bit of a limbo state, and we won't find and we won't get any levity on that one until it premieres at TIFF. If Hard Truth is really good, I feel like a lot of attention will be more geared towards like screenplay. I don't know if Hard if Marianne gets in with that picture, although she'll get me get some hype. Such a run for Blitz. I'm just losing a lot of faith in Blitz overall, and I feel like Blitz is just going to get no acting nominations. Like, I feel pretty 
weirdly secure about that fact. Even if it's like really strong, I feel like it's no acting. And Saoirse Ronan is not even looking like rock solidly the lead. She might be the lead, but I feel like she will be campaign and lead either way. But I don't think, um, I don't know. I'm feeling, I'm feeling just no, no Saoirse. Pam Anderson of Last Showgirl. This is a bit of an elephant in the room. This is going to be her big dramatic showcase. And um, who knows if she can actually act. <laughs> but she'll get some hype no matter what. I am, like, confident about that. And I do think there is an argument to be made that, like, this could be her, like, her Mickey Rourke or her Brendan Fraser moment. And not, minus the win in terms of Brendan Fraser. I Well, maybe she does win. Maybe she does have the case to win. If The Last Showgirl isn't terrible and she's fantastic, maybe there is a case to be made for that. I'm not taking anyone else really that seriously. I don't think Saoirse Ronan's getting it for the outrun because what the fuck is the outrun in this race? Kind of nothing. I heard Saoirse fantastic, but... Nah, I really think she's just gonna fade. The whole Kidman Baby Girl I just said I was gonna talk about her a little bit. I feel like she'll be actually really fucking good. She, she is Nicole Kidman. That's never... Never a bad thing. Baby Girl just looks so much like it's just going to be like a fun t movie, like a fun erotic thriller. Erotic thrillers don't get nominated for Oscars. I don't really see much reason to take her that seriously. I'll talk about Demi more like in brief. People are definitely going to like pine for her, try and get her in. I don't think it'll be uh, worth it, like worth trying, honestly. But you know, hey, she'll probably do well with critics, so we'll s you know. I told the chances are in zero, but my guess is just now. Cynthia Reeve for, for Wicked, you know, this is a tony winning performance but i feel like wicked is just gonna be too like mainstream and broad for like acting but we can talk about text in a later video for sure which i definitely will Florence Pugh and ryan destiny are in like similar positions where it's like if the movies aren't disasters then you know i can have the conversation but my guess is just like nah. the day of a challenge is not happening long day's journey tonight i guess doesn't exist and then robin wright is in the movie here so <laughs> yeah no and that's that's the prediction for the acting i'll do supporting acting hopefully before the end of the week because i gotta you know i start watching tiff movies next week so i want to focus on that hopefully i'll get supporting actor in tech within the next two weeks before the festivals begin all right like subscribe and share and that's uh, bye. <laughs>